You know, it's interesting how so many people want to claim Jesus as their poster child. Take, for example, Muslims who claim that Jesus is a prophet born of a virgin who did wonderful miracles by God's leave. Then you have Eastern traditions like Buddhism, which would might claim that Jesus is an enlightened one, much like the Buddha himself. Or Hindus who might say Jesus is an incarnation of Vishnu. Even atheists might say that Jesus was a revolutionary teacher who taught us wonderful moral principles like thinking of others before ourselves and these kinds of things. Now, a lot of that is true. Jesus is a prophet. He is enlightened. He is a paradigm of virtue. He is the one who teaches us wonderful things. But he's so much more than that. In fact, Jesus said that the reason he came was not just to teach us important rules or to have us be good to one another. What he came to do was to be our sacrifice. He says that I have come to give my life as a ransom for many. That's remarkable. That's so different than everything else that's out there. You see, a lot of religious traditions are superficially similar, but they're fundamentally different. We often think of it in the reverse way, but when you study those traditions, you'll find out that they really aren't saying the same thing, except in this one way. Most traditions will tell you that you can please God if you do enough good things, or if you work off your karma through various cycles of death and rebirth and all these other things, you'll eventually achieve release or nirvana or whatever it might be. You can save yourself in a sense. Even atheists would tell you that if we have enough resources, enough education, and a good governmental system, we can achieve a sort of utopia and a Star Trek-like existence, eventually through our own genius. Do you see what everyone's saying? They're saying that you can be the solution to your own problem, that you can save you. Jesus doesn't say any of these things. In fact, he says quite the opposite. He says that we are the problem and therefore we can't be the solution. Think how countercultural that actually is. Jesus doesn't tell you what you want to hear. He's not a salesman. He's not interested in being popular. He's interested in telling you the truth. He doesn't tell you what you want to hear. He tells you what you need to hear. And what you and I need to hear is that we are sinners in need of a savior. All you and I need to do is look at our thought life, look at our browser histories, whatever it might be, to find out that we need someone who's not us to save us from us. But Jesus doesn't just tell you what you need to hear. He does what you need him to do. He's more than a teacher. He is actually the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's what the cross is all about. He does something about sin, not just teaches us about sin. And what he does on that cross is pay the debt that you and I owe to God from our sin so that we don't have to pay that debt ourselves. It's interesting that when you look around at the various traditions, whether they're religious or non-religious, people seem to like Jesus in some way. They like one facet of his life or another, whether he's a prophet or he's a teacher or he's an incarnation or he's an enlightened one. We all want to claim Jesus for ourselves. But Jesus has not only a universal appeal, but a particular mission. And we can't lose sight of that. Because if we do lose sight of that mission, if we rob him of his cross, then we rob Jesus of that which makes him distinctive. And if we rob him of his cross and we make him our prophet, we make him our teacher, we make him our enlightened one, whatever it might be, we do what Judas did. We, to quote Samuel Zwamer, betray the Son of Man with a kiss. We rob him of his very purpose in our lives. You know, it's a common phenomenon for Christians to say that Jesus is the only way. And we do it sometimes triumphalistically, and we shouldn't. Because a Christian doesn't believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation because he happens to be their way. A Christian in his or her heart must understand that Jesus is the way that they happen to have found. But it's not their way, it's God's way. And so when a Christian says, that Jesus is the only way to salvation, and they amen after that, it's not because they amen because it's their way. They amen because at least, thank God, there is a way to God. Jesus invites you and me to follow him. He invites us to the banquet of the master. He invites us to labor in the master's vineyard. He invites us to receive the generosity of his bounty and his hospitality. He invites all of us no matter what our creed, our background, or what we've done in our lives, to follow him. You can join him regardless of what your background happens to be because he invites every one of us. God so loved the world. That includes you.
that includes me. All we need to do is accept what he's done, and we have him. He doesn't have to be what we want him to be. He can be who he is, and we can become who we've always wanted to be in him.